Hi, it's September 12, 2023, and I want to share a few thoughts on storytelling. Now, this is not on the art of storytelling. This is on the experience of storytelling. I believe that when a person tells a story about a personal experience, they relive that experience to some small degree. And that's why people want to tell stories about pleasurable experiences, about moments they enjoy over and over. Whereas unpleasant experiences, they want to avoid. They don't want to tell uh, stories about something horrific. They'd rather avoid those. Uh, an example that comes immediately to mind is that of my dad. He had been on a ship that was sunk in the Philippines during the Second World War. He never talked about that. He rarely talked about it, and when he did talk about it, he said very little about it. My mother, known him for 57 years, uh, by the time he passed away in 2006, and she said he spoke very rarely about it. He, when he did, he said very little. The only time I saw him speak about it at length was when the crew of the ship that rescued him out of floating in Subic Bay for over four hours in uh, waters that were covered in oil and flaming oil. Uh, they invited him to the reunion and he was happy to go. Uh, they were the only people he knew from that time. You see, he had been on a crew, an Atlantic craft support ship that had a crew of about 40, and he was one of only two people that survived that night when three suicide boats rammed into him while they were on station in Subic Bay. This is 1944. Uh, but he told that story. It's the only time I heard him tell it at length. And to me, it seemed like, you know, he told it calmly and clearly. It wasn't emotional. Uh, but also, when I think back on it, I think it was something of a relief for him to tell that story, particularly to a group of men who could understand, who had shared the same experience and knew what it was, knew what it was like. And to any of the rest of us, I can tell you from having spent 10 years in the Navy myself, unless you've been in the service, you really can't completely comprehend the experience. And so there's a lot of times when I would tell a story, or I want to tell a story, I can't, I can tell it to my family, but it requires a lot of explanation. Other times, if I tell a story and I, to someone who's also been in the Navy, or at least in the military of some type, uh, I can be open with them, I can tell it freely, easily, uh, because they understand where I'm coming from. We have the same basic shared experiences in many ways. But was as regards storytelling, I think it's because of this process of storytelling is so intimate to us. It's so psychological psychologically woven into our minds. I'm trying to, I'm struggling with a way to, to put it. That when we tell a story that we've experienced, then we really live that to some degree, maybe to a small degree, like you consider actually going through the experience as 100% into the experience, and that's living it the first time through. When you tell a story about it later, then maybe you just relive it to say 1%, 2%, I guess, in, in comparison. Uh, you don't relive the entire thing. Uh, you just relive the memories, and but you still relive it to a degree. Uh, I think this is I, have, I don't know anybody who has post-traumatic stress disorder. I've heard about it, read about it, 
but from what I know of it, it seems to me that these four souls are actually reliving the same nightmare that they experienced the first time around. And so this is an example, maybe an extreme example of what I'm talking about, how when you tell a story, you relive it. Or sometimes you don't even have to tell it, you just relive it. Uh, but in any case, so what this has to do with writing is that when you communicate, you are trying to take those ideas, those emotions, and those feelings, and get those ideas, emotions, and feelings to form in the mind of the other person. So they experience that same experience as much as possible as you did. Uh, and it's just I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this right now. Uh, you need, when you are communicating these ideas, form a, the form in the person's mind. You need to communicate them smoothly, uh, logically and simply so that they form as easily and as effortlessly in the receiver's mind as they do in yours. And how you do this is your personal art of storytelling. But I think in general there are some basic principles of communication that can at best be described in only broad terms. Uh, but these, in order to form these images in somebody else's mind, and I think that at least some of those principles that come to mind, have written these down or studied them to a great degree, I should probably make a list of them at some point, but I think you have to be able to communicate these ideas, first of all, logically, because if there's something illogical in there, it's going to distract from the ex experience. It's going to distract, uh, it's going to take that person out of that experience, out of living that experience for a second, so they have to figure out what's going on. So, you have to tell things logically. Then you have to say things simply and clearly. The best way I can think of doing that is to use simple words. Um, good example, I think, of this is Hemingway, he's my favorite writer, but if you look at his writings, and regardless of, you know, some disagreements you may have with him on, on some issues, a lot of people, for example, don't like the way he pictured women in his words, but just talking about his storytelling, his writing methods, He used very simple words. He never used a word that would send a person to a dictionary to look it up, unlike a lot of other writers. And to me, that's the essence of clear storytelling. You want to be able to use the same terms and the same words that your reader or that your audience uses so they know exactly what you're talking about. They don't have to go to a, a, a dictionary to look it up. To me, if you're reading a work and you have to go to a dictionary to look up a word, you are losing that experience. You're breaking out of that experience. You're interrupting it. So to find out what that word is. And as a writer, as a communicator, as a speaker, I don't want my audience to do that. I want them to become lost in my words. I want them to become lost in the messages. I want them to live the experience in their minds. Or in their minds. Um, think about the experience you have right now of watching this, or the experience of anything for that matter. Um, if you were, say, having lunch earlier today, or you went for a walk, or you were walking your dog, or 
whatever. You had that experience smoothly, uninterrupted by anything. Uh, it's not like you had to, like you see in some movies, where somebody would be performing some action, and then all of a sudden the screen cuts out and goes to another scene for a second and it comes back. You don't experience things like that in real life. Everything is smooth. Everything is fluid. Uh, everything, nothing is, is quite that disjointed. It's not as disjointed as it can be in movies. And that's the way I think you want the images, the feelings, and the emotions that you wish to communicate. I think that's the way you want them to form in your audience's mind. And to do that, you have to use words that they readily and instinctively understand. And that would be to use, in my mind, my opinion, the simplest words that you can, unless you're speaking to a highly educated uh, audience of PhDs who know the jargon. Intimately, uh, you, if you're going to communicate to the greatest mass of people and get the greatest audience possible, you have to use the words that are most common that everyone can understand. And you can, that way you can get your ideas across. So I've said that you have to form your ideas logically. Uh, you have to use simple language to do them. I think your thoughts when you're forming these ideas in your story, forming these images, I think they need to be fluid and lead smoothly from one place to another. Of course, you can use uh, put breaks and jump from scene to scene in a novel or in a story, just like you would in a movie. But it needs... And how you go about this, I don't know if there's any real answer. But you need to use your best judgment on how to make it go smoothly and uh, fluidly. And let's see, there is, I think, I've got a few little notes here that I want to, uh, so I wouldn't forget. I think I probably forgot half of them already. And that I've already mentioned. You see, this is an experience an example of where I'm breaking the fluid uh, nature of my talk and I'm interrupting it to read these notes. You don't want your audience to look at this in your story or in your novel, whatever it becomes. But, uh, let's see, as I go on, giving you an example of what I don't want you to do. Um, Here's a point that I wanted to make sure I brought up. Now, isn't a great story one you can become easily lost in, as if you're living vicariously in your own mind? That's really what you're shooting for. That's what you want to do with your audience, in, in my mind. You want to get them to form that, form those images in their mind just as easily as they form in yours. Communication, to me, is the ability to transmit your ideas via speech or writing or through any other medium so that the listener slash reader clearly understands those images and the message that you are trying to get across. To do this, you must transmit ideas and emotions clearly, simply, logically, so that the person who receives it will generate them as effortlessly in his or her mind as they form in yours. When we write or speak, we are not just transmitting words. We are forming experiences in the mind of the audience. And we want those experiences that we're generating in our audience's mind 
to form as easily and quickly as if we are experiencing them ourselves. Granted, a novel, sometimes you need, a lot of times you may need to jump around scene to scene, story to story, uh, where it is to explain the entire situation. But in general, in whatever moment you have in that story, you want it to be smooth, logical, easily understood. Um, and really, when you think about it, how the individual writer forms these experiences in the audience's mind is the art of writing. Really, that's all I have for tonight. Like I say, these little talks are just informal. Tonight, having to jot down a few little ideas and notes that I wanted to bring across. But I think you get the idea. Uh, so, I'm just going to clean that off there. And uh, I'll talk to you next time I come up with something. Have a nice night.